back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're going to be joined by Paul Joseph Watson in just a moment. He's going to talk to us about this appalling story that he reported on yesterday. It was picked up by Drudge, a woman who was forced to strip naked at gunpoint during a terrifying SWAT raid. Uh, this is uh, Homeland Security coming into her home. And, of course, as usual, we don't get any explanation as to why they did this. Uh, still, as far as I know, there's no explanation about it, but Paul's going to go over those details with us. Paul, welcome. Hi, David. Good to be back. It's good to have you. This is amazing to me, and of course, as I said in the very first segment, I, I feel like we've all been essentially stripped naked by Homeland Security. They watch everything we do. Nothing escapes their scrutiny, and we dare not question it or look them in the eye. And of course, they don't give us any explanation. Have they ever given any explanation to this uh, woman or to her, her boyfriend, husband? No, this, this merely came out on YouTube and a, a Tea Party website over the past couple of days. So DHS has said nothing about it so far. All we know about it is what the woman involved in the incident told us. So while it's still up in the air, as he said, the, the details that she described were shocking, to say the least. Yeah, tell us some of those details that are in your article. Well, this is basically a couple in Florida they were the victims of a dawn raid on their home by both police and DHS agents. Um, they basically burst into the house at 6 a.m. The couple were in the shower. They just got out of the shower, so they, they were wrapped in towels. And the DHS agents pointed guns at them and demanded that they disrobe. So you had basically a, a naked woman being forced onto the ground at gunpoint. <laughs> Um, the the woman's boyfriend said that the one of the DHS agents then proceeded to ogle her naked body up and down like, quote, a piece of candy. And after that, they spent two hours trashing their house, said apparently they were looking for electronics and laptops. Now, they did have a warrant. Uh, they claimed they were looking for, for electronics and laptops, but the woman claims that they didn't even remove any electronic material. <laughs> they showed little interest in what was on the computers and the laptops. And basically, it was described as a, a feeding frenzy. She, she described it as, quote, two hours of pure hell. They trashed the house and left again. So, as you said, it, it ties into these fears, which were again brought forward by John W. Whitehead of the Rutherford Institute earlier this week, which is that the DHS itself is turning into this kind of national police force, this standing army that is increasingly becoming outside of the law. It's being used for numerous different purposes, spying on protesters, uh, conducting raids, as we see in this case. So it's part of this growing fear that the Department of Homeland Security is turning into this feared federal national police force with uh, no regard for the Constitution whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's an article from The Guardian today talking about another egregious case where they basically did a SWAT team raid threw a flashbang grenade into the crib of an 18-year-old. And uh, if he survives, he's going to be severely impaired for life. And uh, they're sounding, the Guardian is now sounding like uh, the new American. It's amazing. You know, new, uh, 30 years ago, the John Birch Society warning us about the federalization of the police. Well, because they're, they're targeting both left and right. I mean, we've seen the DHS, they post their FPS agents outside Tea Party protests. We know that they were also involved in cracking down on the Occupy movement. They were caught spying on environmental protesters via the Federal Protective Service. So they're targeting both left and right uh, of the political spectrum, which is why, as he said, now the Guardian's reporting on it, people are starting to realize that this, this crackdown is on all of us, no matter our political persuasion. And I think the wider point is the fact that we know they're treating the American people more and more as the domestic enemy, that's why they're buying these armored vehicles, these Bearcat vehicles, not even buying them, being given them yes. by the Department of Defense. They, do. they don't, they just have to pay for the cost to go and pick them up. So they're becoming more militarized. Uh, they're buying equipment that was used on insurgents in Afghanistan and Iraq. So again, we ask the question, who are the new insurgents? And as the DHS itself and other federal authorities have said, you know, it's veterans, it's Tea Party people, it's anyone that's basically political. Well, we've now seen we're scenarios more more of these raids. Exactly, we've seen training scenarios coming out over and over and over again from the military, from uh, uh, training institutions where uh, where they train people in the army about counterinsurgency. And of course, the villains are typically going to be Tea Party people.
And that's what we saw when we covered the, uh, uh, the counterinsurgency in Virginia. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks, I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. If you watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the info war to the next level. I'm joined by Paul Joseph Watson in the UK. We've been talking about his article yesterday that's picked up on the Drudge Report about a Florida woman whose home was raided and she and her boyfriend were stripped naked by the police, handcuffed and held for a couple of hours without explanation. And although they had a search warrant, the question is, is this the way we want to live in our society? Because we see this happening to innocent people all the time. And even whether or not the people are innocent, we see them, uh, we see innocent casualties. Many times they raid the wrong place or the wrong people. They have, uh, sometimes they don't have a search warrant. We were just talking before the break about The Guardian, how both people on the left and the right are starting to wake up to this militarization. This is an article that just came out uh, yesterday. U.S. police departments are increasingly militarized, finds a report. And this is The Guardian talking about an ACLU report. Interestingly enough, in the bullet point items here, as they say, ACLU cites a soaring use of war zone equipment and tactics. SWAT teams increasingly deployed in local police raids. Seven civilians killed and 46 injured in incidents since 2010. You see how even our language is talking about this as if it is a military occupation, as if we've got some kind of asymmetric warfare going on, fighting insurgents in our own country. Even they talk about civilians. And this is something that it actually crept into the lexicon in, in America. I think uh, first noticed it in the movies back in the 1970s where they're talking about civilians. And they kind of did it as a, I took it as a joke at the time, but it's not a joke. And so now here we are 30 years later, you've got publications like The Guardian talking, sounding like the John Birch Society. They were sounding the alarms on this decades ago and of course still are sounding the alarm so it's it's good to have the left complaining about the militarization of the police and uh, we were just talking to paul joseph watson about this article paul this is an amazing story here about this baby this was about a month ago they they broke in 18 month old baby they threw a flash grenade in landed in the crib and they said uh, as they've got the parents taken down they told him that they'd taken their baby to the hospital they'd only lost a tooth and they wanted him for observation when she got there she found out this is what she said. His face was blown open. He had a hole in his chest that left his rib cage visible. The uh, flashbang grenade had landed in his crib and detonated in his face. She says his, her son is clinging to life. He's hurting and there's nothing I can do to help him. These are insane tactics. And they came in first with the war on drugs. I remember the first SWAT teams were in L.A. about 30 or 40 years ago, and of course they justified it with the war on drugs. Now they're justifying it, and that's still predominantly the way it's running, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, they're justifying it in the case of the militarization of the police, buying the armored tanks and so forth, by saying there's an increase in violence, there's an increase in people with more powerful weapons, we need to you know, get the upper hand. But if you actually drill down into the figures of, of violence and gun crime and so forth, they're not going up. They're going down in most cases. So, you know, you ask what, what is the real reason behind this tooling up, behind treating Americans as terrorists or drug dealers, as you said. And, of course, we had the story the other day about the 90-year-old veteran, World War II veteran, who refused to go to hospital. The police were called. They um, beanbag grenaded him to death. So, again, another outrageous abuse. But... Why are they employing military tactics against civilians? Well, I think it's because they're, they're preparing for domestic dislocation and civil unrest. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a story again, this time out of the UK about this, where uh, 
Uh, police have set up this entire town just south of London where they've got mock buildings, mock streets, etc. And they're, they're training to carry on to, to uh, confront angry mobs in riot control situations. Of course, we had the London riots back in 2011. We had massive riots across Europe over the past few years in places like France and Italy. And now we're talking about this possibly happening in the United States. There are several economists who are warning about this based on things like food inflation and a declining economic picture, because I don't think this is going to be born out of political grievances. It's going to be born out of economic grievances, and it's likely to begin in the poorer areas like Detroit as a result of things like soaring food price inflation. Because if you remember, just last October, we had that EBT card glitch where on their food stamps, they suddenly had no limits for a few hours. It prompted riots in several Walmart stores just for a few hours based on this one glitch. So you can imagine if, if that was dragged out over a matter of days and weeks, which is why people like uh, Martin Armstrong, who predicted the 1987 economic collapse, is talking about riots in the poorer areas, areas of America potentially as soon as next year. And he actually uh, wrote a good article entitled, Will Society Ever Wake Up? He makes the point that, quote, the more a society relies upon government, the greater the damage to its economic potential. It requires a control alt delete reboot. So he's talking about how dependency fosters instability and ultimately revolution when the system collapses under its own weight. So, you know, when governments become too corrupt to impose this centralized Marxist planning that they promise will be the land of milk and honey for the for the poorer people, um, it collapses because the underclass don't realize that it's a it's a pack of lies until it's too late, which is why they're now talking about potential unrest in 2015. And which is which is why now the police are becoming more militarized in preparation for this situation. One more quote, which I've got in the article today about the British police preparing for riots, is that the US Army War College from a white paper from 2008 called Known Unknowns, Unconventional Strategic Shocks in Defense Strategy Development. And it warned that, quote, violent strategic dislocation inside the United States could be provoked by, quote, unforeseen economic collapse, purposeful domestic resistance, pervasive public health emergencies or loss of functioning political and legal order. It predicted widespread civil violence. So as far back as uh, six years ago, the U.S. Army War College was preparing for these uh, for this civil unrest, this domestic disorder in America. And I think it's going to arise out of worsening economic picture. Yes. And, and uh, other documents that we've seen from them, they also talk about conditions uh, that could bring this on. And one of the ones I mentioned was a collapse of the border, an uncontrolled immigration surge. And of course, they're the ones who are doing it. I look at this and it's, we see a massive amount of money that's being made. And of course, in the past, it's the military industrial complex that I believe has fundamentally been behind all these incessant wars we've had all over the world. Now they're bringing that home because they found a new profit center where they can sell these police state, surveillance state uh, weapons and tools to local uh, police departments. And it's a very, very dangerous thing. You know, you were talking about the uh, stability and security. One of the quotes that I saw when we were doing research on the Asymmetric Warfare Center before we went out there and looked at that um, uh, facility that they're, they're building to train with, one of the things that they said was the way that you can identify a legitimate or an illegitimate regime, and of course they were talking about the Middle East, was how much security do they need to have in order to get stability? Now, if you use that same yardstick on America, what does that tell you about the legitimacy of our regime? They <laughs> use a lot of security, and they don't see what they're doing and what they're going to be doing as very legitimate because they really are stepping this up now. Exactly, and that's, that's why they're building these fake cities. I mean, mm -hmm. it was $96 million to build this fake city in Virginia. Um, they had a mosque, but they also had a Christian church, remember, a chapel. Yes. You know, all, all the signs were in English. They had the subway. All the signs there were in English. So 
again, it's dual use. Yes, it's going to be used to train uh, troops who are going abroad and occupying foreign cities. But when it's when it's all in English, and when, of course, as Alex has documented, uh, these urban warfare training drills, they're actually bringing in foreign troops to train them to deal with the American citizens. They had gun confiscation programs aimed at American citizens in those programs. Um, then, you know, it's also going to be domestic. Well, you know, you know. Look Paul, at Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. When we went... Uh, even, when, the, even the people who weren't in the line of it, who weren't affected by it, had their guns confiscated yes. after after an emergency. So the, the blueprint is already there to do so again in the future in America. Yes. You're talking about how Americanized it was. I mean, Biggs and I walked through the streets of that town. It was really an eerie experience to walk through this town Everything was was there, fully functional uh, from the outside. When you go inside the buildings, this unfinished uh, cinder block and everything, but everything on the outside was completely finished. And what was really eerie, I think, to me, was the fact that the the stop signs are still, or stoplights are still cycling. You know, as you're going through it. I mean, it was like a city that had just had some kind of a, a biological attack, and everyone was gone. And I thought, you know, that's something that's very different because always in the past, when they've trained about urban warfare. It's always been from the scenario that they came in first with an airstrikes. And so they're essentially going through bombed out shells of buildings and kind of a desert scenario where they're already you've had airstrikes take out the uh, city and they're just going in for an occupation, for a cleanup. But this is very different because here they're going into buildings that are completely intact. I mean, we stood at the corner of First and Main. I took Biggs's picture there. I mean, it, it was bizarre. And everything in those buildings is completely intact. And you talk about being Americanized. The only thing there that wasn't like small town rural America or a city was that mosque. They put it up on the side. So if anybody that's not driving into the place, that was about the main thing that you saw. So if anybody just drives around the perimeter of it instead of going into it, what they see is a mosque. And it's like, oh, yeah, they're just training for the Muslims. They're not training for the Muslims. They're training for the Americans, for the conservatives, for the libertarians, for the people that, as they've pointed out in scenario after scenario, are concerned about government overreach. Exactly. And I mean, we've we've had document after document. We've also had things like, you know, the paper targets, the what were they called? Yes. No hesitation. Yes. And it, it was kids yeah. in playgrounds. It was pregnant mothers. Mm -hmm. And these were being sold to police departments. They were being sold to the Department of Homeland Security. So we know repeated examples where they're targeting the American people domestically. It's dual use. And as I said, I think it's because they know the veneer of civilization is very thin. They know that if you know, the food supply gets cut off going into New York for 10 days, then there will be absolute bedlam. Um, they know that this this fiat money system is collapsing. People are starting to notice their quality of life is declining. People, households are having to work two, three or four jobs just to maintain the standard of living. And then you've got, you know, like the G GDP figures today are completely atrocious. The economy seems to be back on the slide again. So this is what they're preparing for. And yeah, what, said, you're ref what you're referring to there, Paul, is the Commerce Department said today that the gross domestic product fell 2.9% at annual rate instead of the 1% that it reported last month. They always do that, don't they? They always come out with something that is, looks better than it really is and then revise it down the next month or the next quarter, the next report, so they can show an increasing trend. But they're having a hard time putting a happy face on this number, these numbers. And they're coming out and saying, well, actually, it's a downturn that's three times larger than we told you just last month. Yeah, and it's, you know, these are the worst figures in five years. And again, I think you could connect it to the point I made earlier about dependency on government and all those Obama quotes you played as we were coming in from the break, because, you know, the regulations aren't getting any lighter. Uh, it's becoming harder and harder to start your own business. People are being cracked down on in a, in a manner of different ways. So, oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's how you sack an economy. And that's that's the way the United States is going. Unfortunately, at the moment, more government control, more bureaucracy see more regulation. You look at what happens to countries that do that. I mean, look at France. It's in a complete mess because of a socialist government that's completely <laughs> oppressed and suffocated uh, private free enterprise and entrepreneurship. So I think that's the danger in America, that it could well go that way. And that's why they're preparing for this unrest. You know, one of the things, Paul, is, is the story that came out on Reuters today. The picture that's at the very top of it is a picture of a of a Ford manufacturing assembly line.
And as I'm looking at this picture, put this up on the screen, guys. This is the U.S. economy contracts sharply, consumer spending revised down. As I look at this picture that's up on the screen, uh, there's not a person at all in this picture. It's nothing but a sea of robots. And it was just last week at the Margaret Thatcher Liberty Conference in the U.K., Paul, that uh, David Petraeus was talking about how, um, you know, what comes after America? Well, uh, North America, NAFTA, is what comes after that. And he was talking about how, how are they going to deal with the people who don't have their jobs anymore? He says, instead of having an assembly line where we've got 100 workers, now we're going to have two workers and 100 robots. So what do we do with those people? His answer was, well, we educate them for the new economy. I think what they do is, uh, I don't think that there's going to be jobs for them in the new economy. I think they're looking at ways to get rid of them. So when we look at this and you say, if they've got this kind of a, a near-term horizon where they're going to have robots replacing people in factories, robots replacing people in service jobs and transportation jobs. Why are they bringing in so many workers? Well, that's not what it's about at all, I don't think. I mean, we had Jeff Sessions, a senator, said that the pro-amnesty elites are treating people like commodities. In other words, the Chamber of Commerce wants massive immigration so they can get cheap labor. Maybe that's what they're looking at is just a short term, the next five to ten years max. And then after that, we've got a massive army of people who have become dependent on the government, who have been raised by the government from being young teens. That's Obama's army, I think. Exactly. And tying into that, um, we were contacted today by a University of California professor, Daryl Y. Hamamoto, and he's about to embark on a big campaign uh, speaking out against this influx of illegal immigrants. And he came out with some quite astounding statements, given his position as a professor, at obviously what is a very liberal university. He's already been attacked. He's already been harassed by the university for coming out with these statements. And um, after the break, we can get into that because that, that's an InfoWars exclusive and he's going to be coming on the show later this week. Well, that'd be great. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing scenario that's unfolding before us. And when we listen to people like David Petraeus, they understand. He says, hey, we're 20 years into NAFTA. In other words, Americans have not really understood how our economy has been fundamentally transformed, how our sovereignty has been taken away in the eyes of the elite. And so that's why Americans are looking at this and saying, this doesn't make any sense. This is something that Obama's doing. It's not just Obama. I wish it were just Obama. It would be much easier to deal with if it was just one person. This is both parties. This has been going on for decades, and it's only getting worse. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing. And the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com.